Today is Monday, October 12th, 2020. Today, we're looking at the SH-72 soldering iron. I received this from Amazon, and I think I paid somewhere between $15 and $18 for it. And um, it's made by San Urigo, uh, and it is a it is a temperature controlled soldering iron with a dial. And what's great about this is that it's cheap. So um, just something funny about the name uh, San Urigo. San Urigo. San Urigo. Yep, three, two, one, go. So we're gonna open this up. Let's see how it works. Nice packaging. It's got a little booklet. Oh, oh no, it does have English. Great. And then uh, here's the actual unit. It's got a plastic shell. It's got like a metallic to it, the logo there. It's got our little dial here. And then uh, there's the hot bit. So we'll just slide that in there. Tighten it up. It, it feels kind of, kind of uh, not well balanced. Should have some more weight this direction, personally, my personal opinion. All right, three, two, one, go. Uh, how are we gonna power this thing? Let's, uh, I've got this USB-C PD device. Uh, I'm curious if it will, it fits. I'm curious if it'll um, actually work and not like blow this thing out. We'll find out. So I've got this being powered from an Aki over a uh, 100 watt supposedly capable USB-C cable. So it's supposed to deliver at 20 volts, 3.25 amps. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be, I mean, that's 65 watts. So, you know, that should be enough. We'll see, uh, we'll see what it, what it'll, what it'll do. We'll also see if we'll just toast this um, 19 volt powered guy. All right, so we're starting to warm it up. I'm gonna put it at 400. And uh, you know we'll we'll give it we'll give it the the requisite warm up, and only the the finest chinesium thermocouple can uh, can help us with this task. So we're gonna see if this is getting anywhere anywhere close to its desired 400. Well, it's not even warm. Hmm. This power. Output may not be adequate because that's not even doing nothing. Mm. See that it's a very slow heating iron. I don't think that's the case. I just think this PD trigger thingy bob is just not not going to work. No one ever got fired for buying IBM. So let's see. Yep, that's going to work. Let's. Let's plug this bad boy in. And this guy should be good for 16 volts at four and a half amps, I think. I'll put 16, four and a half amps. There we go. Let's try that and see if we get any more chooch for our chotch. Huh. It says DC 12 to 24 volts. I'm getting nothing. Is this thing working? Yeah, that works. Just doesn't seem to want to, uh... do anything. Maybe I've got it not fully socketed in there. Yeah, that's not heating up. So let's just check our connectors. How does this thing go together? So there's a collar. Uh, 
sure. So screw that back on there. Let's refer to the manual. 16 volt should be at 32 watt. Reference table for soldering iron supply voltage and current. Remove the fitting nut. Pull out the solder tip. Insert and tighten the fitting nut again. Well, I don't see what I can do different. It's, it's inserted and we've inserted power. And our power, I mean, do we need to check our power? Nothing wrong with that. You got a bum soldering iron. Well, that stinks. I bought this like two months ago. It's been sitting. <sighs> Darn it, we're gonna take it apart at least and see what's going on. See if there's something obvious about how that connection is made inside here. All right, so there's the uh, there's the business end of the, the device there. It's those copper contacts. And so when we insert this, well, it, it appears to be making contact. There's no reason that I can see why it would uh, necessarily not be working. Um, I, I guess we could uh, I don't know, flex them a little bit. Um, shouldn't have to, because they're already pretty much good contact. Why don't we just scrape, scrape a little bit? Maybe they're corroded. Just, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, circuit wise, I mean, there's like not too many components in there. There's, uh, two chips. I don't know what they do. Let's, uh, can we take this out? Little pin comes out. This just lifts out. Nice, nice. Okay. So there, there's our little device. Um, TPC8107, whatever that thing is. It's a diode, some uh, transistors of some sort, or FETs. A little uh, tensiometer. It's not really much going on. It's all analog, just dropping, dropping the volts. So... Dang, like what could be, what could potentially be wrong with this thing? Why don't we um, just spin this around a little bit and put this in our, our high quality test jig. Our metal conductive elements here. Oh yeah. Oh, it doesn't fit. Uh, I go like this, super high quality. And then I'm gonna turn this off. Plug it back in, plug. Ooh, had a little bit of juice in there. So apparently there's a little light inside there. I had not seen that the first time. Let's do this again. Lights on. All right, and then um, we're gonna Test the tip this time. Oh, now it's warming up. So that red light was not visible last time. I wonder if it just didn't have good contact. All right, let's put it back inside of its case. Our little, little hands can be somewhat helpful holding the hot thing while it cools. We reassemble our disaster. Oh, come on, buddy. Yeah. Probably assembled by someone with very small hands. Okay. So that just snips back together and you find the, 
another bit. Yeah, slurred it into the place. It all snaps back. Supposedly nicey nice. Sure would be nice to see that LED from the uh, the outside. Perhaps there's a modification in our future. Oof. Very tight. Very tight. All right. So now we'll uh, put this this guy back in. And we'll uh, we'll turn it on. Plugged in. Yeah, I really can't tell. That LED is not visible from the outside. Oh well. There we go. All right, finally, five minutes, five minutes in, and we're we're finally soldering. All right, let's see how closely this seems to come to its desired temperature range. So this is set to 420, uh, and this is reading in Celsius. So we'll. Uh, Give it a few to, to settle. Do a little math. So this one's in Celsius. I have a feeling this is Fahrenheit because it says 420. But it doesn't have a, a unit, you know, so it's it's probably freedom units. So uh, 420 minus 32 um, times 5 divided by 9. 5 by 9. Ugh. 9. 215, 240. So it's it's not super precise, but this is also an analog device. So, you know, um, I'm okay with that. Um, let's see how it melts the solder. This is some cheap uh, 6040 thin stuff. Got a little tiny project to, to use this with. Whew. All right, turn that off, save our battery juices. And then uh, just putting ends on um, a little a little uh, linear potentiometer here. So I'm going to be able to use this on a circuit board or a um, proto board. This little linear slide right here. Um, so I'm just going to put some uh, put some feedies on it. So we're going to feed it with the red wire. And get our solder. Whew. Stinky stuff. Best solder job ever. Totally kidding. That's uh that's functional. It's a little bit cold. Cold joint. I think I might change the solder. I don't like this stuff. All right, we're upgrading to some Kester uh, 6337 eutactic solder. And uh, eutactic solder just means that the, the alloy um, has a melting point that's different from 6040. It, uh, instead of it like getting all jiggly and pasty, it all goes at the same time or something like that. I don't really know. You should probably check it out on, on Wikipedia. But it's also got a nice... Mmm, pine scent. I love that that smell. Oh, reminds me of being a young child and spilling solder everywhere, including my appendages. And you know, still have that scar on my leg. And I'm not kidding. I've got one right here too. It's probably like 13 or so. You know, you only burn yourself once, maybe 10 times, before uh, you learn. This is not how you would normally uh, do things, folks. It's just, you know, it's what I'm doing. Whatever. Whew. Stinky. Good enough. So now I can uh, put this on a little, little proto board. Why don't we try this out for something a little bit more difficult? So I got a, a large board. I'm going to just try and take off this through hole um, resistor, which I don't really know what 
what it is. So first off, I've got to um, I've got to add some regular solder to it because they used lead free, um, and we're gonna test you know how well this thing can pump heat into something. Um, so I can tell, oof, it does not want to does not want to flow. It's also not very warm in here. You know, it's only like I don't know, 65 degrees. middle of October. All right. Put some on the top too, because you know, sure, that'll help flow some jiggly bits. Jiggly bits. Flowy bits. Flowy bits. All right, and now, what am I going to use to pry this off? I think we're just going to go, going to shove something in there and apply some um, even, pressure as we just lever it off one side. That kids is how you get a giant blob of solder shot in your eye, by the way. I mean, I'm wearing glasses, but it, in all likelihood, it would end up on my face. Nope, didn't go yet. There we go. All right, so this is a functional tool. I kind of like it. It's light easy to handle. It's not bad. You know, it puts out a decent amount of, of uh, quick reaction heat. I'm, I'm satisfied enough, you know. Give it a 8 out of 10. The SH-72. Maybe we should do it send a 7.5 out of 10. 7.2 out of 10. Nah, we'll give it an 8. I like it. It's gonna stay. It's gonna stay in my um, to my bag. All right, San Diego. Weep. Subscribe.